This video shows you how to convert a linear monosaccharide to a cyclic form. So in this example, we're using an aldohexose. So it's an aldo because it's got an aldehyde group, and it's a hexose because it has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. It's also a D sugar because the last hydroxyl away from the carbonyl carbon is on the right. So when you have a D sugar, and it's an aldohexose, which is the most common, you get a ring that's a six-membered ring, looks like this, and then carbon six is always on the left corner at the top for a D sugar. So that's basically a given. And then this oxygen here that I've colored in is this oxygen. So let's go ahead and put the first hydroxyl on. That oxygen is this oxygen. So it can either point up or it can point down because this is a planar carbonyl. So you don't really have a choice on this position because it's a D sugar that's six carbons. You do have a choice on this one, but it doesn't really matter where you put it because originally it was a carbonyl oxygen. So the ones that are important are the hydroxyls that are position two, three, and four. They determine which sugar it is. So for this one, if you just turn the linear form sideways, these are on the bottom and these are on the top of the ring. So if they're on the right-hand side, they're gonna be the bottom of the ring. This is, you can consider this vertical line the plane of the ring. So this is carbon one, which is this one. Carbon two is this one. So it's on the bottom or to the right of the plane of the ring. So it's gonna go down here. And this is carbon three. Let's just draw the numbers in here. Two, three, four, five, six. So carbon three is this one. It's on the top here of the ring. So it will go here, pointing up, and then its neighbor is also on the left or on the top side of the ring. We'll just write top here, bottom here. So it's going to be up as well. So that would be your cyclic form. I'll draw it over here where it's a little bit cleaner. So it would be down, up, up. So likewise, if you're looking at the cyclic form and you know it's a D sugar because of the six membered ring and the carbon six is on the top here, six-membered, so it's an aldose. You can just write your aldose structure like this. Just draw your line, CH2OH on the bottom, and then what you have to put in are the four hydroxyls. It's a D sugar, so that's always going to be on the right-hand side for the last chiral center. So again, you just have to fill in carbons two, three, and four. So it's going to be down or on the right-hand side, and then these two are up so they're on the left-hand side. And that's all there really is to it. Now let's look at a ketose. Ketose is a little bit different. Again, we're going to do a ketohexose because they're the most common. And we're gonna make it a D sugar. So we'll put this for our hydroxyls. So I'll just put D here, and this is a D. So when you have a D ketose, you make a five-membered ring, assuming it's a hexose. So again, this is carbon six, it's carbon five, carbon four, carbon three, and then what you have on this anomeric carbon is you have a hydroxyl, which again is the carbonyl oxygen. 
and this one is this one. But now, since this oxygen is here, you still have this as a group, so this would come off on the other direction. So that's carbon one, carbon two. So then the only two you have to really put in are four, three, and four. So one, two, three, carbon three is down. And then one, two, three, four, carbon four is up. So it would look like that. And then one more thing before we're done here. When you have the hydroxyl that used to be the aldehyde or the carbonyl carbon, if it's on the same side as carbon six, this would be a beta cyclic form. And here we have it on the same side as carbon six as well. So this is a beta cyclic. If you wanted the alpha form, it would look like this. For the same exact molecule, it's not an enantiomer, it's not an epimer, it's just the other anomeric form, and it would look like this. So again, this is our formerly aldehyde or carbonyl carbon, excuse me for the ketone. This is the one from carbon five. And since these are opposite, one's up and one's down, this is gonna be the alpha cyclic form or the alpha anomer. And this is the beta anomer. For the alpha aldohexose, I'll just draw it over here. It would look very similar. Everything's the same except for the position of the hydroxyl on carbon one. So it go down like that. And this would be considered the alpha anomer. Again, opposite sides, so alpha. Same side is beta. All right, if you have any questions on that, let me know.